Today, I want to tell you a little bit about innovation, and specifically innovation on the what we call the Silicon Prairie here in the Midwest, and specifically in Nebraska. So I want to do that by telling you a little story, uh, the story about locking pliers, or the brand name Vice Grips, which we all know them by. Vice Grips are one of my favorite tools. Uh, they were actually invented here in Nebraska, and I'll tell you more about that in a moment, but uh, they're a tool that I love because they're not designed to do any specific job. There's no problem out there that vice scripts are made to address. Vice scripts are used when things go poorly, when things go bad. So if you have a bolt that's turned off uh, or broken off, or you have a bracket that's broken and there's just a little tab and all your, your only hope is to grab that little tab, what you reach for is vice scripts. You reach for them when everything else has failed. And that's one of the reasons I love them. Now, I like to collect pictures of strange uses of vice grips. So here's a couple nice ones here. Uh, using vice grips as a sink handle, uh, using vice grips uh, as the handle to a hammer is, I think, a fun one. And in the middle, you can see a hood ornament made from a pair of vice grips, which I think shows the love of vice grips. Here are kind of some safety-related ones that maybe are bad uses of vice grips. But on the left is the vice grips holding an electrical connector on a private airplane. On the right is a classic. You see this all the time of vice grips being used to steer a car rather than a steering wheel. And in the center is, what, is a picture recently from the Nebraska State Patrol where they found a trucker who was using vice grips to crimp a brake line. And I think it's really nice that they took the time to zip tie the vice grips to the axle so that it would be extra safe in that implementation. So what's really fun is vice grips were invented in Nebraska by a gentleman named William Peterson. And here's a pair of the original. And they really haven't changed much since this patent. He invented these in uh, 1924. He was a, a blacksmith in a little town called DeWitt, Nebraska. But you have this uh, screw that opens and closes the jaws to different sizes. And then you have this locking mechanism that closes tight around objects. So you can take a pair and you can adjust to whatever size you like and you can reach in here and clamp tightly and you can adjust how tight you grab that. Now, what's very interesting to me is that here's another patent of another inventor of locking pliers, also in Nebraska. And these are, patents are just two years apart. This is 1926. And as near as I can tell, the, these two gentlemen had no knowledge of one another. These were totally parallel inventions that in Norfolk, Nebraska, uh, these vice scripts were invented while William Peterson was developing his uh, about 70 miles south in DeWitt, Nebraska. Uh, this has a different mechanism for that adjustment. I mentioned the adjustment uh, for the size of the jaws. Here's a turnbuckle that allows you to make that same adjustment. So it's kind of a different approach to achieve the same problem. Now, the story goes on. In 1966, uh, here's a patent for uh, these, what are were called lever grips here. And this is a set of vice grips where that uh, adjustment is made automatically. So you can come in and clamp that on there. Clamp onto something that's small, and then without making an adjustment, you can come into something much larger and clamp on that one, and that adjustment is made for you automatically. Again, you get that tight closure on that but the size adjustment is made automatically. These, uh, that technology can still be purchased. I show a modern pair here as well. So I think this is very interesting. Every major innovation in locking pliers happened in Nebraska and happened with, within what I'd call the Nebraska Triangle. We've all heard of the Bermuda Triangle, but this is the Nebraska Triangle of locking pliers. I don't think that's a coincidence that all that happened uh, in this tight area. Uh, I think the key to, to this is that the people who made these inventions were addressing problems that were in front of them. People in this area have problems in farming and other areas where they need, uh, they need locking pliers. So it's no surprise that the inventions come from the area located near the problem. So what? So what does this all say? First of all, it says innovation is possible in places like the Silicon Prairie in the Midwest and in places like Nebraska. But I think a key to this is noticing that the co-location of the problems with the solutions. You should work on problems that are in front of you. And I think that's key to innovation really everywhere. Um, 
they say that necessity is the mother of invention. And if you have problems in front of you, this is where innovations can come from. It's at least a very good place to start. So here we are today in a place called Nebraska Innovation Studio. We're doing a lot of things here to, to foster innovation. This is a maker space, but it's a very special maker space in that it brings together artists and engineers, students and retired folks, people from all walks of life to come together and build things and create innovation, hardware-based innovation. Another feature is the place called, we call the Combine, which is an accelerator here in Nebraska. But this accelerator is special because it's focused on ag tech. And on the right, you'll see a robot called the Grain Weevil, which is designed to drive around inside grain bins. Grain bins are very dangerous and dirty and dusty places. And it's a perfect job for a robot to go in there and make inspections and uh, do the work needed inside of, of grain bins. This is a problem, again, that's co-located with the solution. I use Vice Grips as an example. Obviously, that's a very low-tech uh, device. Uh, from almost 100 years ago now, but uh, we also have very high-tech things here. This is a robot designed to perform sur abdominal surgery. Abdominal surgery is also a problem, of course, everywhere, uh, but this is a small robot designed to enter inside the body. Rather than a big robot on the outside, this is a little robot designed to go, go into the body. This is a world-class technology to being developed here in Nebraska. I think the lesson here is that you should work on familiar problems. You should solve the problems that are in front of you. So in a place like Nebraska or the Midwest, that might be ag tech or food processing, or in general, just hardware-based innovation. You should find the pain in front of you and that, use that as your starting point for innovation. And if you do that, you can have innovation anywhere.